What's going on everybody? Rust Belt Builds here. Today, we're doing rear brakes on the Camaro. So we got drum brakes, if you noticed. In this box, we got the shoes, left and right. The hardware for both sides. We got two brand new wheel cylinders because that wheel cylinder on the driver's side is leaking. Did not get new drums because there's nothing wrong with these drums. But if you'd like to learn how to do old style GM 10 bolt or 12 bolt or any drum brake setup, stick around for this video. Thank you for watching, like, and subscribe. So what we're doing right now is we're taking this side off so that we can, they mirror each other. So while we take apart one side, we're just gonna, if we have any questions or concerns, we can walk around the car and look at this side uh, while we disassemble and reassemble that side. <coughs> and then once we're done over there, we come over here, disassemble this. That's already reassembled, so you can just go back over there and look, hey, this goes there, blah, blah, blah. He is getting this spring off here and this spring off here using a flathead. Oh, bod. Yeah, it didn't even bloody a knuckle either. But if these brakes weren't so dirty, I would say that you may have done this before. We should get these pins out. Now with these, what you have to do is you have to depress them and spin them around where this slotted pin turns sideways and goes through. There's two of them on either side. Hey, there you go. Hey, there you go. All right, so once you've disconnected all of your hardware around here, all of your springs, your shoes are ready to slip off. You just pull at the top. And it'll still be attached by the parking brake. You can take that and manhandle it, or you can just leave it on. I mean, if you wanna have your parking brake, it'll still be there, so. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some sandpaper and some some type of like PB blaster or something and make this all clean because there's friction areas where your shoes ride. Your shoes will ride on the actual uh, like dust shield and you don't want that stuff to get caught up. So these tabs that used to push off of the shoe into the wheel cylinder itself, make sure you save those just in case the hardware kit you have don't, doesn't come with new ones because I found that they usually don't. So here we are in the Rustville garage. Uh, we're looking for some PB blaster and some sandpaper. And as you can see, you know this is my garage. <laughs> um, I don't know if I have sandpaper, but I definitely have some of those. <coughs> I had some Schaefer's penetrant, which is like the best penetrant on the market. Schaefer's, if you see this, like Schaefer's oil, whatever send me all of your products. I run 20 W50 racing oil from Shapers, so keep that in mind, I need six quarts. This is the best penetrant on the planet, hands down. Comment your other penetrants, I guarantee you this one's better. This is the stance that I want right here. Probably lower the front end by like two inches so it's like barely tucking the tire and then I want like a 29 inch radial hard well I got some 220 sandpaper here and some blaster and I'm gonna hit the surface for this you'd probably want brake clean but I don't have brake clean and I'm not trying to go to the parts store Hey, will you go get my Ford shirt so I can wipe up all this shit with it? <laughs> I ain't taste very good, but I'm real. <laughs> hey, honey. Right now, I am using an adjustable, a big one at that, to take off the brake line going into the back of the wheel cylinder right now. So. You want to take off your brake line and then there are two bolts whatever size he said all right so 
your wheel cylinder just slides in like this from the front if I can get a good angle of approach there it is slides in you got two uh, at least for the old these old American cars it was seven sixteenths okay so we got our brake line in new master cylinder bolts are in started always start your bolts before you hit them with an impact one ugga dugga I don't know, that was kind of quick, it sounded like a couple for me. Ain't turning no more. Ain't turning no more. And snap. Holy shnikes! Some folks are born mm. made to raise a flag. Oh, what red, red, white, and blue. And when the tax man comes. Hey, hey, whoa, whoa, hey. We're gonna copy. copy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, we don't want to. All right, so. Uh, basically to start off, once you got all your bull crap off and the wheel cylinders in, um, this is what I've done. Take the nubs, we set them back in the little spot here. Uh, there is also this bar that I would like to get in there at the same time as we do this. Um, I'll show you the orientation when we figure that out. Self-adjusting hardware, make sure you have the spring flipped over to where it's not going to be in the way of these teeth. And once we get that, take the e-brake, I'm pretty sure it goes up in here. Looks just like it's made for it. I've never done a 74 Camaro, but I've done a lot of Rangers set it in and that should be the start of it pretty much so then from here having one of these pins just kind of set that in there so that way we have something sort of holding it so now that we've got it pretty much started um, now what you're going to want to do is what we're about to do and go through and pretty much just make sure you got all your stuff ready to go and put on and make sure you go to the other side where we have not touched it whatsoever. All we've done is taken the drum off and kind of get a really good idea of what you're doing. It doesn't matter if you're doing this particular vehicle. If you're doing any older style drum brake, this is going to be the best way to do it is just take off one side, start on the other. Every time you have a question, go back to the other side and just check it out. You can't really mess it up that bad. Um, if you do, I don't know, I guess take it to a mechanic once you realize like, oh, hey, my rear brakes are not working. But that's what we're about to do. Uh, catch you here in just a second, I guess. All right, so what we've got going on here is we got the self-adjusting piece here. Don't forget the spring. They didn't give us any new hardware for the self-adjuster. Um, but basically, you need to make sure that this back hole goes back through that pin in the back. And then you have this long piece that's going to hold your other spring wrapping up and around and then also we have put the spreader bar in between now make sure you orient it right we have the spring oriented forward and there's a they're usually arched and you have the arch mo ten, nine times out of ten that arch is going to be pointing outwards so that way it's giving more room to the inside all right so we got the self-adjuster hardware here it is placed in with a little spring it is going to be sitting just above the actual adjuster hardware itself and it will have this bar that will come up it goes up over and around and then this spring here will go to that keep in mind we also have the spreader bar already put inside the middle which has an arch it's built like an arch with the uh side with more space toward the inside not the outside and that's how it's going to be about nine times out of ten Oh, bye. Mm. Mm. Well, she's in there. Welcome back, Rust Belt. This is uh, day two. Um, it got a little dark. We did it kind of after work and didn't really have a whole lot of time. So today, we're kind of going to wrap up on the other side and we kind of missed out on a few things on the other side that we should point out, or I feel like we should point out, we feel. And basically, we're gonna have her done tonight. And this should help you figure out basically almost any drum brake you run into as long as you're somewhat mechanically inclined. Oh yeah, come on, bud. Oh, smooth as butter. Um, all right, let's see how I want to go about this one. Come on. 
flathead for the win, boys. Put some sideways. That will plop out like that. Bro is speed running the drum brakes. Oh, but I've done so many drum brakes. It just took me a minute on the first try because I hadn't ever really seen these. Once I see drum brakes, man. Boy, I tell you what, he turns into an animal. <laughs> I just know what I'm doing. Kind of. Don't quote me on that. I've never been certified in anything that I've had a job for. Putting that on your, uh, putting that on your gravestone. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I want... I told you guys I felt funny. That ain't gonna for real. <laughs> All right, so this side <laughs> is the leaking wheel cylinder side, and if you want to take a peek right there, splooge magooge. So you notice how that's like oozing? <laughs> it's not oh my God. It's not supposed to do that. I should call her, bro. <laughs> the long, slow, painstaking. The hash slinging, <laughs> the hash slinging slasher. <laughs> Currently taking the brake line off of this side, but it's taking longer than NASA trying to get back to the moon. They deleted all the evidence, bro. They deleted it, bro. They just, they just destroyed the technology. Oh no. Neil Armstrong, if you're watching this, you're mad sus. Crisp. All right, so uh, just real quick, kind of an orientation deal here. So what you'll have is the self adjuster will sit like this and it will have the sprocket facing towards this uh, arm, I guess. So you have the adjuster arm here with the spring. Make sure you take this plunger, stick it down in here and this your plunger pins, I call them that, I don't know what they are, retainer pins, um, they'll stick up through these two holes. And you'll also want to make sure you have this bar here, again, spring to where it's going to be clearing the sprocket itself. And that is your orientation on your adjuster hardware. So then you just kind of take it and put it on like this and now. Where are the plunger bits? Slip this one in there. Make sure this piece stays right here. These two shoes will sit hugging that pin. This will sit here and kind of act as a separator for those springs that you're going to be putting on here in just a second. Oh! <laughs> Oh my God. God dang, so. The hub won't go on. So what we're doing is we are adjusting the self adjuster. Not really the best way because we're putting a tool right on the teeth, but we're getting it done. Um, I'm hoping I'm going the right way. Basically what we're trying to do is tighten this so that this will compress and bring our shoes in. Take two. So this hole is beat. <laughs> Someone is getting rowdy in an F-150. All right, so both of the drums are complete. Now it is time to put this on the ground and do the smokiest burnout you've ever seen. This is actual anim animal abuse that I'm recording right here. All right, so we have completed the uh, brake job on this Camaro here. Make sure that when you do any brakes, uh, if you're taking off any lines, changing any calipers, any wheel cylinders, bleed your brakes. We didn't really include any clips here because you kind of need two people to do two different tasks, but always bleed your brakes and retorque your wheels. So I don't really know the specifications. I'm not gonna Google it, but play it safe. I'd say about 90 foot pounds that I'm gonna torque these to. So do at your own risk. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Uh, it's coming up towards the winter time. There's going to be a lot of modifications done to this thing. Uh, this thing's going to be a whole different animal. It's definitely going to run in the 11s.
next time you see this on a track. But for now, you know what to do. See you later.